TR Connections Radio presents. Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here in the sports and entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Kelly. We have a great show planned for everyone watching all around the world as we are going to be discussing the superstar the Vegas Golden Knights needed, and that is Jack Eichel. And before we get into the discussion of Jack Eichel, go to PRConnectionsRadio.com. Check out the dozen shows that are on the network. There are amazing, and I mean incredible, shows on the network. This platform is building every single day. Brand new content every single night on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. So go to their website, look at the show list, a lot of amazing content here on PRConnectionsRadio.com. Also, if you are on our YouTube channel, welcome to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and turn on notification bell so not miss any content on PRConnectionsRadio.com and their YouTube channel. And if by any chance you are on the Vegas Hockey Hub YouTube channel, we post content daily on the YouTube channel. So for everybody on there, welcome in, as it's going to be an incredible 2023-2024 season for Vegas Hockey Hub, as your Vegas Golden Knights are looking to go back-to-back Stanley Cup champions. So getting into Jack Eichel and discussing who Jack Eichel is, that man, this guy has been absolutely incredible for the Vegas Golden Knights. And when it comes to Jack Eichel, from when his beginning of his career playing at Boston University to where he was with the Buffalo Sabres, performing and becoming a young up-and-coming star in the NHL to becoming an established superstar here in Las Vegas, there has been an incredible journey for Jack Eichel. So let's get into his career. Let's talk about who Jack Eichel is when it comes to as a hockey player. Now, as you see here, Jack Eichel, Boston University, Hockey East in the the NCAA. And Jack Eichel was an incredible college hockey player. I mean, Jack Eichel had a one-and-done season at Boston University playing for the Boston Terriers of the Hockey East. And I will mention when it comes to Jack Eichel, not only was he the best college hockey player hands down that year, but there was a lot of hype surrounding Jack Eichel. There was a lot of hype concerning would Jack Eichel become the next potential star in the NHL? And anybody who wants to go back to 2014, anybody who wants to go back to 2015, you will remember that Jack Eichel and Connor McDavid were linked together because Connor McDavid was the best skater coming out of junior hockey in Canada, and Jack Eichel was the best junior hockey player coming out of the United States. It was a good comparison. There was a lot of back and forth on who was the best there. Um, I also want to mention our Tammy Panarin as well because when it came to Europe, He was the guy everyone was focusing on out there in the KHL for Russia. So you had Panarin, you had McDavid, and you had Eichel. So what did Jack Eichel do in his one and only season at Boston University? What did he do for the Terriers, you might ask? Oh, he just had 26 goals, which led the NCAA. He had 71 points, led the NCAA, had an astounding plus 51 for Boston and did all of that in 40 games played for Boston University that year. And heck, even if you want to dive just a little bit more into that team, if you want to go a little bit more into Boston University and what they did, it's actually quite incredible what they did in terms of Boston University because this was a Boston Terriers team that had some really good talent on it. Not only did they have Jack Eichel, who's wearing the number nine, by the way, who which has always been his go-to number, regardless if it was here in Vegas, in Buffalo, playing out there in Boston. But when it came to Jack Eichel, he had some pretty good teammates on that Boston University team. 
In fact, two of them went on to play in the NHL. So the first one was a defenseman by the name of Brandon Hickey. And Brandon Hickey actually went on to become a, a solid player in the NHL. So Brandon Hickey, not only does he become a player at the NHL level, not only does he play as a you know mid-round pick in the 2014 NHL draft, but funny enough, he actually played the last two seasons for the Henderson Silver Knights of the AHL. Yeah, it's kind of a funny twist on it, by the way. So Brandon Hickey turns out to be a Henderson Silver Knight, but he was on the same college team as Jack Eichel. And I will say when it comes to him, he has never played an NHL game, but he has played over six seasons in the AHL. Not bad for somebody who is playing college hockey. Somebody else who is on that team, by the way, someone I have to mention is somebody else who played for the Vegas Golden Knights for a little bit, and that was Danny O'Regan. Now, Danny O'Regan also was a Henderson Silver Knight. He was somebody who also had an organization ties to the Vegas Golden Knights and was even part of the Buffalo Sabres for a little bit. So yeah, Danny O'Regan was on that same team, Jack Eichel. You had uh, Brandon Hickey. There was a bunch of players on this team that have had at least some ties to the Vegas Golden Knights, or if not more, they had some really good outstanding talent that came out of Boston University. I mean, it was pretty much the go-to place in college hockey. Now, there is one more name I do want to mention. Just because they did play on that team, I do have to mention it just for a reason. You also had a good um, forward and AJ Greer and AJ Greer is a name that also should sound familiar because he was a second round draft pick in 2015 and he is now a good member of the Boston Bruins organization so AJ Greer was part of that team as well he is now a member of the Boston Bruins so the Boston University team that Jack Eichel was on for the fact that he led the team with 26 goals 71 points in only 40 games that was incredible. What else did Jack Eichel do at Boston University, you might ask? He became the second freshman ever to win the Hobie Baker Award, which goes to the best player in college hockey. That's right. He was a freshman and won the Hobie Baker Award in the NCAA. Consider it like the Heisman for the uh, college football. All right. Consider it one of those trophies that you get as the best player in your college profession. I also have to mention he was a scoring champion for the Hockey East. He also led NCAA in goals. He led NCAA in points. Jack Eichel was a astounding name for Boston. But how did the team do, you might ask, as we're talking about Jack Eichel? Okay, he had a lot of stats. He had some good points. But did Boston do well? with Jack Eichel? And the answer is absolutely yes, they did. Jack Eichel and Boston University went to the Frozen Four. For anybody who is a college basketball fan, they have the Final Four. Well, for hockey, they have the Frozen Four. And not only did they get past the semifinal, but the Boston University got to the final. They got to the national championship game in 2015. They lost to Providence. But Jack Eichel was a big part of them getting to the championship game in 2015. So I want everyone to reflect real quick when it comes to what Jack Eichel has already done. Just in his college career, Hobie Baker award winner, check. Scoring champion, check. Got into the final, Frozen Four, check. Helped his team get to a national championship game, check. Jack Eichel was checking off boxes left, right, and center as a college hockey player. He was somebody who was making a name for himself as a college hockey player here in the United States, as the Massachusetts native was making himself well-known out there in Boston. So after having that incredible career, what did Jack Eichel go on to do? Well, he wanted to play for Team USA. Or more importantly, 
he became one of the solid members for Team USA. As in the 2014 and 2015 World Juniors, he's played 10 games for them and had nine points. I mean, Jack Eichel had pretty much a point per game playing for Team USA. Now, they finished fifth, and they finished fourth, respectively, in the World Juniors. Team USA doesn't really do that well in terms of the World Juniors. Normally, it's dominated by Canada. You have Russia. You know, there's some really good teams there that are in the World Juniors. You have Sweden. You have Switzerland. I mean, Team USA normally doesn't do that well in team in the uh, World Juniors. But the fact that Jack Eichel played back-to-back years, and the fact that it's 17 years old, he's doing all of this work for Team USA, having nine points in 10 games, scoring two goals for Team USA, he was actually adding more to his resume, appearing for Team USA. So what happens to Jack Eichel, you might ask? Did he go number one or did he go number two? There was a debate that year about McDavid versus Eichel. That was the debate all year long. There was the tank for McDavid, the tank for Jack Eichel. And the Buffalo Sabres, and that general manager to his right, by the way, was the reason why it happened. Jack Eichel would get drafted second overall in the 2015 NHL draft by the Buffalo Sabres. And for the next six years, he would be not only the face of the franchise, but he would be the guy who ran Buffalo for good and for bad at times in Buffalo, but he was still the face of the franchise there. And if we want to stay on the 2015 NHL draft for just a minute, um, there are some players I do want to mention that were also drafted in 2015. Of course, you have McDavid, who's the best hockey player in the world right now. You had Jack Eichel, who we're talking about in this video, second overall. But so many people forget that Mitch Marner went fourth overall to true Toronto. Mitch Marner has become a solid number two. He has actually become one of the best number two guys in the NHL. Mitch Marner has been the Robin to Austin Matthews. He has been one of the best sidekicks the NHL has had. So Mitch Marner going fourth overall to Toronto is incredible. Also, 10th overall, you had Miko Ratanen, who has done incredibly well for Colorado as he helped them win a Stanley Cup. He went 10th overall. You had Matt Barzal, who went 16th overall to New York Islanders, has become their face of the franchise. Kyle Connor went in the mid-first round to Winnipeg. He has become one of their faces of the franchise. And I also want to mention this because I find this a bit interesting. Later in the draft, you had a guy get selected in the 2015 draft. In the second round, the Carolina Hurricanes drafted Sebastian Ajo Ajo, from the Carolina Hurricanes. So the fact that Carolina drafted their face of the franchise in the second round, Jack Eichel went in this draft, Connor McDavid went in this draft, Nico Ratanen, Mitch Marner. So many good names were taken in this draft. So, yeah, 2015, one of the star-studded drafts the NHL has had as of late. So Jack Eichel would have his NHL debut with the Buffalo Sabres, and not only would he have a good de- debut, he would have an impressive debut with the Buffalo Sabres. Not only would he have his first career goal in Ottawa, but he actually would have 21 minutes of time on ice. He actually would have three shots on goal, and he would even cause a penalty in the game. So he was creating a lot of opportunity for the Buffalo Sabres in that first and ever game that Jack Eichel would play in Buffalo. And I also want to mention this real quick. Jack Eichel would have a solid rookie campaign. He would have a good debut for the Buffalo Sabres as how, as he would play in 81 games for the Buffalo Sabres that year, 24 goals, 56 points, a solid rookie campaign. The only problem that Jack Eichel had was that he was in a star studded rookie class. Like I mentioned, the 2015 draft had a lot of talent in it, but they also had some guys who were being brought over 
that were part of the Calder Trophy voting alongside Jack Eichel. So you had Connor McDavid, who finished right ahead of Jack Eichel. You had Shane Gostisbehere, who had an incredible rookie year for the Philadelphia Flyers. He was their face of the defense. He looked like he was going to be one of their guys moving forward. And then you had the winner of the Calder Trophy, the guy who came from Russia, who the Chicago Blackhawks poached from the KHL, and the guy who went from being an undrafted free agent, somebody who the Blackhawks brought over and became the Calder Trophy winner, and our Tammy Panarin. So the Calder Trophy, him finishing fourth, doesn't look that good. But then you were reminded who he finished behind, and you had Connor McDavid, the best hockey player in the world, and our Tammy Panarin, who's one of the highest paid players in the world. And that's not a bad list to be behind. And the more interesting thing I have to mention real quick is that Jack Eichel would then rejoin Team USA. And for the first time in his career, he would be part of their 2015 World Championship run for Team USA. And not only would he help Team USA get a bronze medal in 2015 for the International Ice Hockey Federation World Championship, but he would score seven points in 10 games for Team USA in his first ever uh, action playing for Team USA on the main roster for their 2015 World Championships. And as a matter of fact, he would even be invited back to Team USA two years later for the 2017 International Ice Hockey Federation World Championship and would score five points in eight games for Team USA in 2017. So Jack Eichel had a good college career, had a fantastic college career. He goes to Team USA, and not only did he play for the World Junior Championships twice, but he has actually played not once, not twice, but three separate times for Team USA in the World Championship, 2015, 2017, and 2019. Jack Eichel's been part of the roster. But how would Jack Eichel do in Buffalo moving forward? Let's get back to what he was doing in Buffalo. Because something that a lot of people don't really relate to, or a lot of people don't really seem to comprehend, is that Jack Eichel was getting more confident as the years go by. Jack Eichel became a star in Buffalo, similar to Tage Thompson right now in Buffalo. Jack Eichel was establishing himself. And how did he establish himself, you might ask? Well, the next two seasons Jack Eichel was in the league, he would have 24 goals once again, 57 points, and 22 penalty minutes. He would have a similar stat line to what he had in his rookie year. But then the next year, Jack Eichel would bump himself up and would have 25 goals, which was his career high at that point, and 64 points, which was a career high. So Jack Eichel was establishing himself in Buffalo as a 25-goal scorer and a 60-point getter in Buffalo. He was becoming a top 40 player in the NHL. He was becoming a rising star in the National Hockey League. And at only 22 years old, the Buffalo Sabres decided that he needed to get extended by Buffalo, that he wasn't going to overlap his rookie deal they had to assign him today. So in 2017, the Buffalo Sabres signed him to an eight-year deal worth $80 million. Jack Eichel would become a $10 million man in Buffalo. Now, I want everyone to remember what happened back in 2017. Jack Eichel was actually kind of panned for this move at the time. There was people who genuinely believed that Buffalo was facing the small, um, let me put this in the right way. There was critics who said that because Buffalo is a small market, that because Buffalo doesn't have the major market appeal, that they were overpaying Jack Eichel to make him stay in Buffalo. Now, 
regardless if that was true or not, regardless if you believe it or not, the reality is they paid Jack Eichel an eight-year deal, $80 million, because he was their face of the franchise. He was the face of Buffalo. Heck, he was actually the best player in Buffalo when you talk about their NFL and NHL team at that time. So Jack Eichel getting an eight-year deal, $80 million back then, regardless if you thought he was overrated, if you believed that he was getting overpaid, regardless of how you felt, Jack Eichel earned that eight-year deal, $80 million, because at that season, he had 25 goals and 64 points heading off that contract. So for Jack Eichel, what did that eight-year contract imply for Jack Eichel? Well, not only did Jason Bottrell give him an eight-year deal, not only did that give him a $10 million cap hit, but he had a no-movement clause for the fir- for the last four seasons of that deal. That's going to be very important, by the way. His first four years did not have any stipulation on it. His last four years had a no movement clause, which, by the way, Vegas is having to deal with now. So for Jack Eichel and for a guy who's a Buffalo Sabre at that point, for Jason Bottrell to give him only a four years of a no movement clause, that's going to provide valuable coming up soon. I also have to mention his base salary was mostly $10 million every single year, except there was two seasons that he had a $2.5 million base salary for the Buffalo Sabres. Now, let's get back to the conversation. Jack Eichel in 2018 would change his number to the, with the Buffalo Sabres. He would become the number nine. He would go back to his college number with the Boston University. And not only would he change his college number, but he would be named the captain of the Buffalo Sabres. He would become the face of the Buffalo Sabres as he would be named to their first all-star team of his career. And he would be the solo representative of the Buffalo Sabres in 2018. Not that it's shocking, by the way, considering how Buffalo was in 2018, but he was an all-star. He was a guy who was actually making a mark in Buffalo. And I want to mention this very quickly. Jack Eichel played six seasons in Buffalo. But before I mention those stats, there's something very important we have to go over. Jack Eichel, in his last three seasons in Buffalo, was a shaky situation, to put it nicely. Okay? He had... 28 goals, 82 points in 2018-2019. He would have a career-high 36 goals and 78 points in a shortened 2019-2020 season. However, in 2020-2021, he had an injury to his, to his disc. Jack Eichel played only 21 games before getting hurt with the Buffalo Sabres. He would have only two goals, only 18 points. Jack Eichel would have season ending, uh, a season-ending injury to his spinal disc. And a lot of people didn't know this, and maybe some people didn't realize this, but in April of 2021, this right here would be the last moment that Jack Eichel would be a Buffalo Sabre. This would be the last moment ever that you would see him donning the royal blue. That you would see him wearing that crest of the Buffalo Sabres. Because Jack Eichel would actually call out the team for their medical practices. He would get stripped of the C in the summer of 2021. And he would not play for the Buffalo Sabres in the 2022-2023 season. So, as he ended his tenure in Buffalo, as you see on the screen here, here was Jack Eichel's statistics as a Buffalo Sabre. His six seasons playing in Buffalo, he had 139 goals, 216 assists, 355 points, and 142 penalty minutes in 375 games played. 
three-time All-Star, fourth in Calder Trophy voting, and finished eighth in Hart Trophy voting in 2020. So with Jack Eichel, that was the end of his tenure in Buffalo as on uh, as he would get flipped to your Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights made a fantastic trade, made a blockbuster trade as, and I actually woke up my family to this, like I ran up the stairs, knocked on the door and told my family, oh my gosh, we just got Jack Eichel. Like I was happy. I was excited. Somebody wasn't that I, was, that I talked to. She wasn't as happy about it. But I will say that when I heard about the news, I was insanely thrilled that the Vegas Golden Knights got Jack Eichel. As you see on the on the screen right here, they got Jack Eichel and they got a third round pick two years later. And in exchange, the Vegas Golden Knights had to give up Alex Tuck, who was a middle six forward, Peyton Krebs, who was a top prospect, a first round pick who turned into Noah Oslin, and a third round pick in 2023. So this was a game changer for the Vegas Golden Knights. This was somebody who would help the Vegas Golden Knights become a legit team. This was a guy who, once he got that injury, once he got that surgery, he would help solidify the offense here in Vegas. And not only did he do that, not only did he help the Vegas Golden Knights, but he helped them do something that had not been done up to that point. Jack Eichel, as you see right here, would help your Vegas Golden Knights win a Stanley Cup. Jack Eichel, in his second season playing for Vegas, not only did he have 27 goals, 66 points, but he went to the playoffs and had six goals, 26 points, and helped your Vegas Golden Knights hoist that Stanley Cup above his head. And I will say when it comes to Jack Eichel, he is someone who Vegas Golden Knights really needed at the right place at the right time. And I will make an argument to everyone right here because had somebody asked the question. Is Jack Eichel the best player on the Vegas Golden Knights? Absolutely, freaking lutely Jack Eichel is the best player here in Vegas. It's not even a discussion. Jack Eichel is the superstar Vegas needed. Jack Eichel is the top 20 player the Vegas Golden Knights were waiting for. They couldn't win a Stanley Cup because they didn't have a sniper. They did not have somebody who was going to take that game-winning shot when it mattered the most. Jack Eichel would take that game-winning shot. Jack Eichel would be a guy that would go into the paint and it would be in the post, and he would shoot and when it mattered the most. So I will say for Jack Eichel, who's a top 20 player in the league right now, that he is the guy that has made the Vegas Golden Knights into a legit offense. Jack Eichel is a reason why the Vegas Golden Knights won a Stanley Cup. Because you have a superstar. You have someone who has become your face of the offense. He is someone that has made your team into a legit discussion as a top five offense in the NHL. For years, the Vegas Golden Knights were missing that. The Vegas Golden Knights, they tried it with William Carlson. Look, the first two years, William Carlson seemed like the guy, but he wasn't the guy long-term. Some people believed that Jonathan Marchessault was going to be the guy. And he can score the goals, don't get me wrong. He can score some goals, but he is not a guy who you would say can score 40 goals a year. He is not somebody that I would say could score 75 points consistently as an NHLer. Jack Eichel had a 78-point season, had a 66-point season. Jack Eichel has been the guy for Vegas. So to conclude on this show, when it comes to Jack Eichel, yes, Jack Eichel, as we're discussing him, he has become the superstar. Vegas needed. Jack Eichel has become the guy Vegas had to have to win a Stanley Cup. 
And yes, Jack Eichel is the superstar Vegas needed. So this is a great edition of Vegas Hockey Hub. I'm your host, Ian Rickelli. And until next time, continue watching hockey, go support junior hockey, and go Knights, go.